Hey, thanks for checking out Nuts and Bolts with Tone. Today, I'm going to take you through a look at one of my toolboxes. We're going to go through my Matco toolbox. It's about a 56 inch box that I've had since I started. It's my very first box. And we're gonna go through that and I'm gonna show you what I have in here. And I uh, hope you enjoy it. Let's get it. All right, so here we go. We got the 56 inch Matco box, right? The box I got when I was in school, bought this box, it was a promo. And I think there was yellow, blue, and red. I can't remember, there was only a few colors of this box. So this is what we've got right here. This is what we're working with. This is one of the boxes that I have. All right, so we'll go to the top here. Got a little messy uh, messy top. Got some, uh, some tensioner pins for an Audi. Rear timing chain tensioner, got some anaerobic sealer for the Audi, got the water, got the got the nice brake flush gun. Rolling right across. Here we go. Got the tablet for my inspections. It's lunchtime, so got the monster. And what do we got here? So we got what I what I talk about all the time. I talk about paint markers. There we go. There's the paint markers that I use. Got the highlighters, all different colored uh, sharpies. Sometimes I gotta, you know, print out a diagram and and it, you know, really get in there. Gotta have all different colors. And uh, right here we got the different uh, different uh, got the different Loctite. We got the green the green Loctite. This is for a pipe that goes in a head. I had a Prius and the pipe, the heater hose pipe, came out of the head. And the way you fix it is you get this green Loctite. You put it on the pipe, you hammer it in, and you, you let it sit. Yep, there we go. We got the Gorilla Super Glue. Uh, got a few more things of Super Glue. Got the sunglasses for the real sunny day. Got to take a, take a ride. Uh, and that's about it. That's all we got up here. Got the nice little uh, caulking gun for all the different kinds of caulking that I do. All right, here we go. Let's get into this. All right, top drawer here. You're going to say the same thing that everybody else says. Dang! He has a lot of gum. Yep, I got a lot of gum. I like to chew different flavors. I get bored of certain flavors, so, you know, there's the gum. All right. This is for the real stinky days. You know, you got them summer days, and you got to put on that deodorant because, uh, well, you know, you don't want to stink. That's my little personal care there. Got all kinds of good stuff in there got the nail clippers and the nail files and we roll across here got the earplugs for watching a movie on my lunch break when I wanted to just tune out look at that got an extra heavy wrench sticker I got to take that home put that on my toolbox at home so I got I got some new uh, new sharpies here got the pens got more highlighters got a mask for when I uh, have to go out in the public. Uh, let's see. This is for the new 6.7 Power Stroke. Got that RTV. This is for the new Power Stroke right here. Yeah, it's black. It is not dark gray. What else we got in here? We got the rubber bands. Got to have these things for vacuum leaks. You got to pinch off hoses and all kinds of weird stuff. So you got to do that. What else we got in here? This is kind of the catch-all I just reorganized this because I got rid of one of my boxes so this is a bunch of batteries for all different kinds of stuff uh, I got yeah I got eye drops and all kinds of random stuff more rubber bands got the paper clips for that's because I, I plan on jumping a lot of GM's and Toyota's for codes and the old ones no I'm just kidding I don't know where I had all these packs of paper clips but yeah I got those and um, got this gigantic pack of uh, razor blades. All right, that's what you came here to see was that big old pack of razor blades. All right, so let's roll right into the good stuff here. All right, so this here is my electrical drawer. We'll just do like a little, we'll just fan across. And then we'll talk about what's in here. All right, I got my, my super duper snap-on multimeter. Got that thing, I love that. Uh, I got these relay, these relay testers. So these you plug into the relay, 
Now you take the relay out, you plug these in, and you could turn them on and off. So if you have a fuel pump, you know, whatever, air, you know, a, uh, air compressor, you know, whatever you got, you know, all these different kinds, you plug them in, turn on the relay, turn them off, and there you go. All right, so now these are the best. Now this is what you need right here. These are called beta nails. So you open these up, and one side is full of little pinholes, and it clamps down, it makes contact, and it doesn't damage the wire. So I use these all the time. I use them for, uh, if I'm going to ground, I use that, it's a good alligator clip, but also if I want to tap into a wire where I can't back probe. Uh, let's see, let's talk about these here. So these are my regular leads right here, and then these come off, and these are my back probe pins, and these come off, you can put all different types of adapters. I have, I have other back probe pins, uh, you can put, you can, uh, you can put alligator clips on there, all different kinds of stuff. So these are just regular multimeter leads. Uh, so yeah, so this is that. Those are regular leads with the banana clip there. And now these are really cool. Now, this is an extra set of leads. Now sometimes you need to adapt your leads to be really long. And to get a real true connection, when you're dealing with high level computer stuff, I got this extra set of leads and they come with these. So this is how you connect two sets of leads together without having any sort of voltage drop, without damaging your wires or anything like that. So it's a set of these, comes with the red, comes with the black. Uh, let's see, rolling across here. I highly recommend those if you do a lot of electrical testing. Uh, if, if, one, if one lead does not make it, uh, then you need that. So here we go, we got the little camouflage uh, power probe three. This is probably like my third power probe that I've had because I use them a lot and they just, I mean, eventually they fail. Now these here are real, real important. Now, I don't know if you can read. That, but that says cat three, cat four. So these are the leads that you would use if you were testing a hybrid. Yeah. So these are the, the, the you can't use these leads. They are not rated for that. These are specifically for a hybrid. And this meter will actually read that. So that's what those leads are for. They're brand new. I don't use them very often. We don't have to go in and do any uh, testing that way very often. I uh, got a little test light here. Used to be green, but my cord was bad. So I had to get a new cord recently. And uh, so it's orange. All right. I uh, got the power probe lead here. Now this one here is just the regular lead that plugs into the power probe. Now we got this one here. Now this is really cool. Let me tell you, this is something special right here. This one is called the Penetrator. Now, this is by Power Probe, I believe. Yeah, it's by Power Probe. It's kind of hard. It's not really focusing. Uh, anyways, all right. So this is a, a Power Probe lead. So this plugs onto the Power Probe. Now I bought this because sometimes, so BMWs are real common to have bad starters. It's real hard to get down to the starter to check the solenoid wire. And so I bought this as the perfect length. This will actually go on your power probe, go right through the intake runner, and you can poke it right into the solenoid wire. And this thing is sharp, let me tell you. You can poke it right into the solenoid wire, have somebody try to start it, boom, you got power, it needs to start it. Simple dimple, telling you right there, that is the way to go. All right. So this here is just a whole bunch of, now when I have to break all this stuff out, you know I'm doing something hectic. When you got the 90 degree back probe pins and you got all different kinds of, um, of back probe pins in there. Uh, let's see, we got these fancy dancy things here. These are the Ford factory stereo removal tools. That's right. I used to have two, uh, I used to have some that I made from a coat hanger. And it worked, but it wasn't as good. So I bought these. I think this broke the bank buying these, but uh, no, I'm just kidding. Super easy. I think down in there you can see the T-pins. And uh, that's what I got there. Uh, let's roll along here. Got all kinds of just extra wiring. Got some jumper wires. Got the fuel for the butane, for the soldering iron. And for my power probe torch. There you go, it's got the stand. Set the guy up there, let it cool off, right? All right, 
So rolling around along here now, this is actually pretty cool here. This is a snap-on tool. And now let's just say that you want to check to see if you have power and you don't want to break anything out. So you can actually... So this is a positive lead right here. That is a positive connection. That is 12 volts. And it is not lighting up. But if I touch ground with my body... I don't know if you can see it lighting up, but you can hear it. When I let go, there it is. That's just a quick, easy way to tell if you have power. So, it was a little promo. I don't think it costs a ton. But uh, quick and easy if you're just trying to, uh, if you're just trying to see if you have power, snap on. All right. So there's that. We got, uh, we got the amp clamp right here. Hook that up to the meter. You use that right there for checking for uh, for amp draw. And that way you don't have to disconnect the battery. You just hook that around the, the cable and see if you have a draw. You got right here, you got a fuse buddy. So this has got these different connectors right here. You put a fuse in here, you plug this into the where the fuse goes, and you can turn on your AC compressor, you can turn on your fuel pump, you can turn on whatever, and it'll tell you how many amps that component is drawing. And that's uh, really cool. I've had that for a long time. Uh, got the extra lead for the power probe right here. Uh, got the cigarette lighter adapter for it. Uh, a couple long jumper wires. Don't use those that often anymore. Uh, it's got some battery. These screw onto the side terminal batteries so you can, uh, so you can test them and charge them uh, real easy. Got the nice little trailer trailer uh, wiring uh, tester. Plug this in. Tells you if everything's working. And uh, right here, you got this uh, pin kit right here. This is for removing uh, pins out of connectors from Snap-on. There's that. That's for taking out pins out of a connector. All right. So that is it in the electrical drawer. All right. All right. One more time. See anything in there you're curious about? Let me know. Get you some part numbers on that information. All right, let's roll into this drawer. All right, so this is the metric wrench drawer. All right, so let's roll up here to the front. We got these nice little Harbor Freight, little Harbor Freight tool right here. Bought these at Harbor Freight. These are Torx wrenches. They work just great because Torx. It's not very tight. It's all, most it's aluminum. It's stuff is not very tight. You don't really need it to be tight. And so those work perfect. Uh, I got these uh, Harbor Freight as well, I believe. These are just a metric set of, I don't know what they're called, 90 degree wrenches. I don't know. Anyways, got that set there. I have only used them a couple times, but I don't plan on using them a ton. Now this is the very first wrench set I ever had from when I first started becoming a mechanic here. All right, so this is a snap-on wrench, seven millimeter, because the set did not come with a seven. So we're gonna start these off with a Matco eight millimeter. And we go all the way up to 24. And then, so we go all the way to 24, and then I have a 30 inch right here. There's the 30, okay, got that. Don't remember why I bought the 30. I wanna say it was exhaust, it was some exhaust components that uh, would not work with the standard stuff. Uh, so back here we have just, uh, these are SK. SK wrenches, got the line wrenches from SK. Got a set of those. And then I got these S wrenches, and these are, these are Harbor Freight, because these are not something that you need to be of super high quality. They just need to be in your toolbox when you need them. And that is the key. So, all right. So this wrench right here, this 30 millimeter wrench is an Armstrong. I'm not sure how I end up with an Armstrong wrench because I'm pretty sure I bought that from a truck. And then back there is a whole bunch of random wrenches that I have to cut and modify and make work when I need them to. Now this one right here, this set here makes me want to cry. So I bought this set a long time ago. Snap on set right here. 19 through a uh, 10 millimeter through 19 long time ago I was doing a fuel filter or something 
man, my wrench just would not work. I didn't have any cheap wrenches, so I had to take this 12 millimeter and grind it down. Yeah, pretty sad. Yep, that's all ground down. You can see how thin it is around the edges. So it still works, but yeah, that's a bummer. All right, so let's roll over here to my gear wrench set. So we got this 10 millimeter through 19 ratcheting flex head wrenches. These are a lifesaver. I love those wrenches. They come in handy all the time. All right, so now this set right here, this is not a complete set. This is a set of flank drive wrenches here. These are snap-on. So it looks like I got a 10, 11, 12, 13. Looks like so we have 10 through 15 and then a 17. And that's all I have in the flank drive wrenches. And we got these little Craftsman uh, ignition wrenches. Bought, a, bought a, a, set of, a set of tools from Craftsman a long time ago. And, uh, and this came in that. Um, and down here we have, we have the crow's foot, just generic Taiwan, not even sure what brand it is. I think I bought them on Amazon. I didn't buy them for their strength. I bought them for convenience. And then these are SK, got the SK flare nut crow's foot. Now you gotta have those and you don't want those to be cheap. So that's it. The metric wrench drawer. There it is. We'll fan out. That's all we got in the metric wrench drawer. Now let's go to the standard wrench drawer. All right, so same story here. I bought these wrenches, first set of wrenches I bought when I became a mechanic right here. So we're at quarter inch, Matco. All the way up to quarter, one and a quarter. The only thing that this set doesn't have is a one and three sixteenths. Kind of a bummer, but we make it work. So here we have the snap-on line wrenches, okay? Snap-on set. Now I know I could make a lot of room out of this with some toolbox widgets, get rid of these cases, but you know, for right now it works fine. And I don't have a ton of, uh, a ton of um, standard stuff. Thankfully we don't deal with that very often. Now this guy right here, gotta get you one of these. Snap-on, seven eighths and inch and, a inch and one eighth. Use this for O2 sensors. This is gold right here. I love this guy. Uh, I got a set of Craftsman stubby wrenches that go from, I think, quarter all the way up to one inch. And then just the Taiwan crow's foot wrenches right there. And then I got the gear wrench, same thing, gear wrench, ratcheting flex head wrenches. I've had these wrenches for probably 15 at least 12 years we'll say at least 12 years if not longer all right there we go there's that drawer now this is just recently recently organized all right so i have a lot of body stuff here we have all of these body pliers i bought a set of these these blue point right here i bought a set of these a long time ago it was like four or five uh four or five different ones that one, they were in a blow molded case for a long time. I don't use hardly any of them all the time anymore. I wouldn't even have bought them now with all the other things that I have, but anyway, so there's that. There's these, I used to think these were gold. I used to use these all the time, but then they just push right through. I have my multi-use my multi -use pliers that uh, are better than that. So I don't even use those anymore, actually. I should just take those home. Here's all my brake stuff. So this is, this is for the, the parking brake cable and the drum brakes. That separates it there. I just bought that actually. I haven't even used that, that, that hardly at all. Now these guys right here, I bought these. These are, these are blue point. And I bought these. These are actually for the drum brake the little horseshoe clip that holds the drum brakes together. So this squeezes them together, and this one here opens it up. Separates it so you can pop it open real easy. So I bought that set. I, I use those every single time that I have um, drum brakes, pretty much. 
Now this is for like the old Buicks and stuff to have the, the wheel cylinders are put on with a torque wrench. I mean with a Torx bolt. But the only thing I found is that the, the points of the wrench, this used to be square, they would get in the way. And so I had to round this thing off to make it work. Uh, and a lot of times actually what I do is I'll, I'll take them out and then I'll use like 10 millimeter bolts and I'll put the wheel cylinders on with those because these are just a pain. Uh, so there's that. Got the, now this is for the, the hardware for turning the springs on the, the brake shoes. I know some people are like, what is a drum brake? I know, I know, we don't do with them very often. And this is for clamping down, screwing down on the brake spring. Uh, I don't use that very often either. And then this is my, uh, my micrometer. Uh, I bought this, it's a uh, general, I bought this at Home Depot. And what I do on my, with my, uh, is I grind down the edge right there so that way it can go around a lip on the rotor. Yeah, because you want to be able to get around that lip and see what size you actually have. Uh, I got, so this is all my, all my plastic stuff here. So this is all body stuff. Got these little plastic little, little nubbies, different kinds of little picks and prodders for the interior. And got this Matco set here, right here. And this one broke. And this one right here just got this warranty. This one broke the first time I use it. So uh, if you haven't if you haven't bought this set right here, don't buy it. Because I've already broke one, got it warrantied, and then had another one break. Don't buy it. Uh, this is the, uh, the, I think it's a five set from Harbor Freight. I took the other ones home because, well, you see, I won this like 30 piece set from Lyle. And uh, this pretty much has everything and then some. This has every kind of configuration you can think of. I mean, even some random stuff. I wish it told me what I was going to need it for. Because uh, there's some weird stuff in here. Uh, you know, this guy right here. It's angled. And this stuff's really, really sharp, too. It's probably all made with like a 3D printer or something. Anyways, it's pretty cool. I like it. Uh, this pretty much is just my medical drawer. This just has my... You know, all my stuff, you know, you got a headache, got a heartburn, whatever, you got to brush your teeth. Uh, yeah, that's that drawer. Uh, let's go down to the bottom drawer. Now, this drawer here just recently became like this. So we got the snap-on. Snap-on cooling system pressure tester. Boom. Normal set. Got the normal stuff in there. And even comes with directions, just in case you wanted to buy this set and you didn't know how to use it. Got the directions we have. Now, this was a tool right here we actually just talked about in a TTS video. We talked about this, about a diesel after treatment. And we talked about how important these things are. A vacuum refiller. This is, I don't know, 12, 13 years ago I bought this thing. 10 years ago, I'm not even sure. Airlift. I mean, look, all the paper's coming off. I've made a video about this, about how important it is. Uh, but anyways, there it is. Super important right there. Uh, let's see. All right, got the, now this is just the random, all right, bearing and seal race sealers, seal installers. As you can see, this one's all messed up from pressing, pressing bearings. Uh, I, I've kind of broke that one. I actually probably should get that fixed, warrantied or replaced, not sure. Uh, let's see what else we got in here. We got uh, this nice Capri uh, hex bit set that I won in a Christmas giveaway. Yep, there's that right there. And that one goes from 2 millimeter all the way to 14. So loving that. I haven't had a chance to use, use it yet. I think I used it once. One time it was the biggest one, the 14 millimeter on a drain plug, I think. Uh, I got the AST uh, filter socket set. Uh, I love this right here. This has got a, one of these works for Volvos. Um, works for a lot of different things. And then you got these for the little, the little oil filter caps that are real close to the intake manifold. And you need it to be real, real flush. So there's that. Got that AS, AST. Uh, got, let's see. All right, we got... Now this is a must right here. This has got some, it's got all kinds of different uh, wheel lock applications. It's for these, for these fluted. The only two I really use is this one here. 
not sure what size it is. So that one there, that's that's usually in the cars. And then if the truck, if you have a truck, it's this one. Only two I've used actually. The whole set's brand new. Oh wait, no, I used uh, that big Allen one right there one time. So, anyways, there's the Steelman set. All right, uh, let's see, what else do we have in here? We have the Infrared Thermometer Gun. So this one here is a master cool. I've had this for a long time. Actually, this is my second one. Uh, my battery's corroded inside. So now I take them out. I don't use this very often. So if you don't use uh, stuff that takes batteries, take them out. Take them out and let them sit. Now this is a set that I bought a long time ago because I had a Mitsubishi that kept blowing fuses trying to figure out what was wrong with the door lock system. Now, now they make a set like this that has like five or six or seven of these different sizes. Um, this one only has what, a 10, 10 amp, 15 and 20 amp, that's all it has. So kind of a bummer. Uh, basically, you plug this thing in right here, you take the fuse out, you plug this in, and it'll pop this circuit breaker right here instead of popping the fuse. So, that thing is money. I just wish that I had bought the, the pack of five or seven or whatever the, whatever it is, I'm not sure. Uh, let's see, if you work on diesels, you need this guy right here. This is an adapter for testing the cooling system cap on a six liter and a six four. And I want to say a 7.3, I think, is all the same. Use this thing, test the cap. I, I just tested one this morning, and it failed. Uh, this is for a Mercedes. I had a Mercedes a long time ago. I had a test. I used this thing like twice, maybe three times. Costs like 60 bucks. Yep. And then the good old Volkswagen one. Yeah. You use that one a lot, buy this one. Definitely need that one. So that's what we got in there. Now this is something that I bought for six liters for testing the boost system, the charge air system for a leak. Uh, I had one that was really kicking my butt. It's torque solution. The only thing I did was I mounted a, I cut it open and mounted a valve stem on here. I didn't like the, the system that it had um, and it didn't, didn't work. I don't remember what I didn't like about it, but it comes with the boot, comes with the clamp, everything. You just take the air filter hose off the turbo, put this on, Put an air hose on there, listen for leaks. There you go. Uh, this one here is just relay tester. This right here, you plug these in, take the relay out, plug these in. Got the pins at the top so you can easily test relays or test where a relay goes. Uh, got the diesel refractometer. Uh, definitely need this if you work on diesels. And after treatment, this right here is for testing the def fluid. You definitely need to buy that, and it's really a really cool thing to do. Uh, buy it, and then and then go look through it just to see what it looks like. It's actually really, really cool. All right. Got this Power Probe Short Finding Kit right here. Another one, don't leave the batteries in. I don't use this very often, but I, when I went to go use it, it was all corroded. So this is kind of cool right here if you have a shorted, uh, if you have a shorted uh, light, that's where like a light bulb would go. You plug this in, and that way you can figure out if you have a short. Actually, we'll tell you on here when you plug it in if you have a short or not. It's not real good at tracing up and down the wires, uh, but it will tell you if you have a short. So that's really good. I actually like that. And then it's got a couple pins here for uh, going into uh, into connectors. So there's that. We've got all that good stuff there. All right, let's just move this over. Put all that away in a minute. All right, let's see what else we got here. Okay, so here we got, I bought this set a really long time ago and I love it because it lays out in a case and it's got metric and standard. It's Allen's from, I don't know, 28,000s all the way up to 38s and 0.7 millimeter all the way up to 10. So that's really cool there. Got this set here from Matco and this has got these Allen's here and I believe they're, yeah, they're metric. Use those every once in a while. 
And then have the butane uh, soldering iron from Power Pro. Uh, now they have now now Power Pro, but now it's all the rage with the cordless uh, the cordless soldering iron that you don't need uh, butane. Uh, I got the suction cups for the windows. This worked most of the time. You just have to lick them before you stick them, and then they hold. These are those really cool snap-on Torx bits, and they have like a they have like a ball on the end. So they have a wobble and they're real short. My very first YouTube video, I needed these to get the fuel rail off on this Eco Diesel. Super important set right there. I recommend that. Uh, this is a real, this is a real common set right here. This little screwdriver with all these little micro bits. I got this at Lowe's, the Cobalt, I think, pretty sure. Yeah, Cobalt. It has a whole bunch of uh, micro bits, little bitty screwdrivers and all that stuff. Uh... Just got some miniature picks. This this used to be this used to be two drawers all spread out into one. So I got a bunch of screwdrivers. These are from Lowe's. I use these. I buy them there like I don't know, just a couple bucks. I use these to modify, uh, make special tools out of. Got the spark plug wire socket uh, pliers. Don't hardly ever use those anymore. Actually, I can't tell you the last time I used them. Uh, nothing real good in this drawer, just some adjustable wrenches. I don't ever use adjustable wrenches. And a whole bunch of pocket screwdrivers. That's all we got in that drawer. Let's move on to this guy here. Now this is my fuel drawer. So we got the, the Noid Light and IAC tester back here. Don't hardly ever use this thing anymore. Once in a blue moon we use this thing. Got the Noid Lights. Test that. Once in a while you use it, but you know, you don't use it very often, but I can tell you this, when you do use it, you really needed it. It's just for a quick check for a fuel pulse. Check, see if you're getting a signal. And then there's that guy right there. Don't really use these a whole lot. I think I use these. I use these all the time in power strokes. Uh, and then these right here are real common for the Ford um, transmission cooler lines. And I think this one here is real good for, there's a GM fuel filter not that long ago. Uh, I had to use that for, that's about it. Don't really use anything in there. Here's the spark tester I talked about in a video. Uh, you got this one here. This is just one you lay across the wire. Uh, this one is, I uh, can't remember who makes this one. It's not real good, it's not real accurate. And then if you're getting into real fine tuning, this one here will tell you how much spark you have. So you can measure how much spark, how far the spark will jump to see how strong a spark you have. Uh, I got the, oh, the funnel. This funnel right here is for the cordless, if you have a capless fuel system and you need to add something to it, this right here will open it up without damaging it. And uh, for those EVAP leaks right here, this goes on where the fuel cap goes. And then you can put the smoke machine right there and smoke test the EVAP system. Uh, a couple cords to make my, uh, my my fuel pressure tester longer right here. And a couple of adapters for the fuel pressure tester. Got the remote start back here. Hardly ever use that thing. Uh, a bunch of random fittings for testing fuel pressure. And uh, that one right there is for releasing fuel lines on a Subaru. Um, different stuff. And these are for the, the heater uh, release. This is supposed to go through and remove the, um, and disconnect the, 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 the fittings on the heater hoses. They don't really work very often. And then this is that uh, vacuum, um, that tester for the vacuum system right here. Hook that up and you can hook a smoke machine up to one end. Uh, this is my, the rest of my sockets that I don't have in my cart. We're back here. We got like the rest of the big ones. I got inch and sixteenth all the way to inch and a half. Uh, this is like seven sixteenths all the way to inch and an eighth in the, in the deep socket. Got the 12 point random sockets for, I can't remember why I have those. I have them for something. Um, 12 point, uh, Quarter drive standard sockets. These are my triple squares. My long torques. 
We got my Tecton, uh, my long torques. Those are uh, snap-on. We got my Tecton long Allens right here. Got my long Allens from snap-on there with the ball on the end. Don't break anything loose with those. My good old fashioned Harbor Freight uh, metric Allen set right here. Works perfectly fine. And you got these little short 3H drive uh, sockets. I have a set of metric and a set of standard. And then the good old uh, wobble, wobble universals that you don't use very often. And then I made a video about these. These triple square sockets that have a 3 8 and quarter drive on the end. And if you can't get a drive on there, you can also put a wrench on there. So those are actually really cool. I, I recommend those. Highly recommend those. Let's see. This is that uh-oh drawer right here. But if you get into this, things could be going sideways. You got the master rethreading kit right there. That is Craftsman. We got the battery battery holder right there. That's for picking up batteries and carrying them across the shop. Got the Harbor Freight big rivet gun. Uh, a bunch of pullers. You got this one right here. This is for pulling Chryslers, Chrysler balancers. This is for pulling everything else. This is for pulling all the other kinds of balancers and things like that. You got the Matco... Uh, Matco power steering pump pulley puller remover. The big snap-on 76-piece tap and die set. This is metric and standard. This one is, is real expensive, uh, but it's definitely worth it. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, and then it's the GM, the GM steering wheel puller uh, legs for pulling the steering wheels on GMs. And the very last drawer is... All diagnostic stuff. Got the Matco oil pressure tester right here. Definitely not my not my first choice in that, but I was in a pickle, and he was the first one that could get me one, so that's what I got. I uh, got this one right here. Just got the steering wheel puller, puller uh, removal kit. That works really well. I'm not sure what brand the sticker came off. They're all made by the same people, I swear. Um, got a dwell meter. I know, I know, a dwell meter. What is that? Used to do a lot of emissions testing and had to do a dwell, had to test a dwell. So I got this Matco Long Reach Harmonic Balancer Pulley Puller Remover and Installer right there. Or this is just the, just the installer, yeah. Just the installer. That one is by Matt, by the Matco. Uh, I got a couple different compression tester gauges here. This is for the little bitty spark plugs. And this is for the big fat spark plugs. I can't remember which one is which. Uh, this guy right here is, is a tool that you really should have. It's a, a back pressure tester right there. It actually will pulse the back pressure. You can actually see the needle pulsing. It's actually really cool. And this is a Matco one, I believe. Uh, this is Star Products, so Matco. That's where I bought it from was Matco. I uh, got a couple things left here. Got the snap-on um, compression gauge tester. There you go. Uh, what else do we have here? We have also the snap-on leak-down tester. So I got the snap-on leak-down tester. And that works with the compression gauge. So if I, if I don't have a fitting, I could just grab one out of my compression gauge. And the very last tool that I have in this box is this guy here. And this was not cheap, let me tell you. This guy, we took a diesel compression gauge right here from Snapple. But let me tell you, when that thing hits 500 PSI, you want to make sure it's a good quality. Because otherwise, I'd be afraid that glass was going to pop. And I uh, got a couple, a uh, couple of adapters. Uh, this one's for the six liter, which also works for a sprinter. And then this one is for the seven three. So that is it in my yellow box. I have more tools. 
just in a different box and we will do that. Thanks for checking out Nuts and Bolts with Tone. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell. You get notified of all my future content. Also, check me out on Instagram at Nuts and Bolts with Tone for all my daily life as a mechanic. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you.